So scallops are really fascinating, surprisingly so. The part of the scallop that we actually eat is called the adductor muscle, which is one small part of the scallop as a whole. It's the muscle that helps it open and close its shell. Uh, But there are many more parts of the scallop, ones that we never see in the actual grocery store, including the mantle and the roe, the reproductive glands. Um, Hmm. Scallops have eyes. They have more than 100 eyes right around the mantle at the edge of their shell. Each one with its own lens, retina, and optical nerve. I know, it's fascinating. It's really interesting. And scallops swim. So when we started researching scallops at America's Test Kitchen, I went down the rabbit hole of YouTube videos of (laughs) scallops swimming, and there's a surprising number of them. Um, And scallops can open and close their shells pretty quickly to escape from predators. So they swim in a slightly awkward, slightly graceful, kind of very cute way, but they, they swim up into the water and then fall back down slowly. So their their adductor muscle, the one that we end up eating, has a very strong purpose, which is moving them around in the water. Okay, so when we shop for scallops, I often see the only thing I see, they call them wet scallops. What's the difference? What are we looking at when we're buying scallops? So there are generally two types of scallops that you can see at the store to buy, and that is wet and dry scallops. And there's a big difference. And at America's Test Kitchen, we have pretty strong opinions on which ones that you should be buying. But wet scallops are treated with a solution of water and sodium tripolyphosphate, or STPP, which preserves them as soon as they are harvested at sea. And then they're often frozen. And so this preserves them, but it also helps them to hold on to a lot more water, a lot more water weight. Um, And dry scallops are scallops that are not treated in this way. And which are better? dry scallops, hands down. The STPP helps retain moisture in the scallops, but it also imparts a kind of soapy taste and Mm -hmm. a bouncy texture after they're cooked. So we really don't prefer them. And actually, when we started researching scallops for a book that we're working on, um, we, of course, being America's Test Kitchen, decided to try it out ourselves. So we tested a number of scallops by soaking them in a solution of STPP ourselves, and then freezing them, thawing them, and cooking them to see how they were. And um, they weren't that good. To be Hmm. honest, they had a lot more water in them. They weighed a lot more. When you cook them, they release a lot more water because there is so much more water trapped within them. And releasing water when you cook them prevents them from getting that good brown crusty sear on them because there's so much moisture. Uh, Dry scallops haven't been treated in that way. They are a little bit sweeter and fresher tasting, much more preferable. Okay, often they're not marked dry or wet. So how do we know what we're buying when we're buying? Is there a test? Well, first ask. I think that's always the first best step. Um, If you are at home with a bunch of scallops and you're not sure if they're dry or wet, there is actually a test that you can do to determine for yourself, which is putting a scallop on a paper towel on a plate in the microwave, microwaving for 15 seconds. Um, If they're dry scallops, there'll be very little moisture released on the paper towel. And if they're wet scallops, there'll be a noticeable ring of water around the scallop. You can still use that scallop to cook um, either way. And is there any way to freshen up wet scallops or any trick to making them a little bit better? Yes, we do have a little hack to help make wet scallops better if that's what you're having Mm -hmm. to kind of cover up that chemical flavor taste. And that is soaking them in one quart of cold water with a quarter cup of lemon juice and two tablespoons of salt for 30 minutes. And you almost can't tell the difference. So it's almost you're almost brining it. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So almost every restaurant these days have, have beautifully seared scallops on their menus. Can you give us an idea of how to do that at home? Is there a trick? The trick is high heat. You pat the scallop dry so that it doesn't have extra moisture on it. You don't want that to kind of steam and prevent a good crust from forming. But high heat, uh, you stick that scallop down in there and let it get a nice crusty brown Maillard reaction, delicious side to it. Flip it. Then we often add butter and kind of baste the scallop in a little bit of butter so it finishes cooking all the way through. So you start with a really high pan and then put the scallop in and then don't touch, correct? Don't touch. Okay. Exactly. You wait for that perfect crust. It's hard not to touch our food. It is very hard. (laughs) you got to hold out. I know. It's really rough. Molly, thanks for coming in. Thanks so much. Molly Birnbaum is the executive editor of Cook Science from America's Test Kitchen. Sally Swift is our managing producer. Now, we have the details from Molly for the perfect pan-seared scallop. Find the recipe at splendidtable.org.